Flash radiation is uh, another word, name for it is ultra high dose rate. So um, when we're treating patients with radiation therapy in the clinic, we're using um, a dose rate of radiation coming out of the machine of one to two gray, which is our unit of exposure per minute. Um, what flash is, is delivering 40 gray per second. Um, so we're orders of magnitude faster uh, than we're normally giving radiation. Um, the research in this got started in the early, probably early 60s or so, and what they noticed is when they irradiated cells, they found that normal tissues um, sur had better survival, or different tissues had better survival. So um, as time went on, there was more and more studies by delivering ultra-high dose rates, and what they found was that by delivering it so fast, you actually had this flash effect, which is normal tissue sparing. So um, one of the landmark studies was they irradiated uh, mouse lungs and they did it the conventional way and they also did it with flash radiation. And what they found is there was much less scarring of the lung, much less lung fibrosis, pneumonitis, if you used flash versus if you used um, conventional radiation. Um, and this is just one example, but there's a whole wealth of, of preclinical data uh, echoing the same effect. Um, but it to date has never been, hadn't been done in humans up until 2019. So um, in 2019, they delivered flash using um, an electron beam, electron flash, and they treated a patient with cutaneous lymphomas that had had multiple recurrences. And uh, that patient did quite well, and they actually found a tissue sparing effect uh, in that patient. Um, so what we set out to do is to utilize flash, but instead of using electrons, we're using proton flash, so different beam. Um, it has different benefits, so it can treat deeper into the patient, so you're not limited just by treating something on the skin. Um, and so we uh, teamed up with Varian Medical Systems and came up with a trial design to deliver proton flash for the first time in humans in a clinical trial. Um, so that's what this trial was, FAST-01, is a prospective feasibility study. Um, and where we wanted to start from is obviously a point of safety, right, because this has never been done in humans before. So um, we utilized extremity bone metastases in patients who had metastatic spread. Um, so by treating the extremities, we don't really have to worry about organs at risk. You know, the only things we're really treating are skin, muscles, and nerves. You know, we're ta not talking about things like the spinal cord, heart, and lungs, because honestly, we don't know what it's like in humans yet. So we're starting very small. Um, but we had 10 patients, prospective feasibility study. Um, they could have up to three mets. They couldn't have had radiation in that area before. Um, they couldn't be at risk for a fracture because we didn't. We wanted to assess if radiation predisposed to a fracture, so we didn't want them to have high risk factors for fracture. Um, and they had to be over 18, and they had to have a life expectancy of at least two months because we again wanted adequate follow up. Um, so we started enrolling in end of 2020. We finished last November or no, last October, November. Um, and um, we found that the patient overall, the long and short of it is, is that uh, it was safe, uh, feasible, and non-toxic. So um, overall, we assessed a lot of things in this study. Uh, the two main primary objectives were workflow feasibility to make sure this is something we can actually do in the clinic. We assessed how long the patient was on the table, if there were any delays related to the treatment, the flat flash in particular. Um, and then the secondary endpoint was toxicity, which we assessed by giving, basically by CTCIE, we graded every single potential toxicity from the day they were consented up until our last follow-up. And some data is still ongoing for most pa some patients who are still with us. Um, we also looked at pain relief too, because you know as a secondary endpoint, we wanna see how efficacious we are. Um, so, um, overall follow-up was about five months or so. So far, we're going to, again, continue to follow these patients, but at the time of the report, it's about 4.8 months. Um, there were 10 patients, five men, five, uh, women, their, uh, median age was about 63, anywhere from 27 to 81 years, I believe. Um, and overall 12 metastatic sites were treated, uh, in those 10 patients. So two of them were treated at two areas. Um, 
The patients overall did very well. There were no treatment delays. There were no um, prolonged time on the treatment table. Um, we had various stopping rules that would trigger in case there were, you know, a certain uh, delays. And our protocol is now published, so they can read about that. But um, there were no delays uh, um, for the patients. Workflow feasibility was excellent. Um, and then with regards to toxicity, there were no serious adverse events. So the patients overall did quite well. There were no grade three, four, or five toxicities at all. Um, mostly they were all acute grade ones. Uh, 11 out of 12 of them were grade ones. Acute toxicity, and the most common thing was mild hyperpigmentation of the skin. Um, so we took very rigorous uh, pictures during follow-up of the entry side, exit side, um, and we also asked them pain flare questionnaires as well. Um, we gave them the, the brief pain inventory, which had been used in other validated you know, RTOG studies, phase three studies. Um, so that's how we assess their pain, both overall pain and then at the treated site as well. Um, and pain relief, to move on, so pain relief was very good as well too. So in general, we found that the overall response rate was 67%, but 70% of the patients actually had a, a pain response. Um, and then 50% of the patients actually had a complete response. Um, and although, you know, we only have 10 patients, so we're not powered to say that we're better than previously reported, you know, phase three studies such as R2D 9714 that looked at eight gray versus 30 gray for uh, pain relief. Um, however, we were right on the money with what they found for pain relief as well. So ours was um, 65 to 67% and as they were as well. Um, and in fact, in ours, we found 50% complete response rate and it was 15% in um, the R2G we use in conventional photons. But again, I mean, we're not, the goal of the study was not to say that we're better than that. It's a feasibility, of, you know, safety study to use as a jumping off point for all the studies in FLASH moving forward. Um, but we can at least feel reassured that, um, you know, we certainly don't see any evidence for decreased efficacy. Uh, likewise, the retreatment response or retreatment rates were about the same. So we had two patients require retreatment. Um, the treated sites were about uh, eight, 17 to 18 percent, and that's what they found actually right on, exactly in the RTOG study as well. Um, and then pain flare, only four patients experienced a pain flare. Um, that again was very much in line um, with a phase three study by Chow et al. Um, with regards to pain flare. So um, overall, we've established that it's safe, it's feasible, um, and importantly, effective as well too. So now that we've kind of established this baseline, we'll use this you know, landmark data in humans to really see from here, okay, you know, where could we go next with flash for patients? And that's really, um, really what it was about.